Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, Fourier Transforms. The Fourier Transform is an integral generalization of this series. The Fourier series can explain the physics, the mathematics of your periodic tones, your periodic pitches, your periodic functions. However, if you have an aperiodic sound, for example, like a drum, sound then you need more than these harmonics you actually need numbers in between frequencies in between for noise like all frequencies so think of the Fourier transform where we're heading is to include all kinds of components here not just the integer ones well before we do that we're going to map out a strategy and the strategy is here to first replace the Fourier series with cosines and sines with a Fourier series with exponentials. Introducing exponentials, step one. Step two, expanding the interval. We will then expand the interval from minus pi to plus pi to some larger interval. And then, step three, transforming to an integral. We'll make the transition from this sum to an integral and these will be exponentials here and finally for aiming for infinity we're going to want to integrate over everything and in that sense you can think of the Fourier transform as describing any function see while with the series you're describing a periodic function but here any function will do we start with the Euler relation and here's a nice exercise to review to get the backward Euler relations the cosine and the sine in terms of the exponentials you simply here write another Euler formula with e to the minus i x and you have cosine x minus i sine of x and if you add them together you get two cosine divide and so on. It's nice to review that and it's also nice to remember these two. So we start out here with our Fourier series and we're going to replace this with using the Euler trick. So for the cosine we're going to introduce the sum of the exponentials divided by 2 that's going to go in here so you'll have an n up here with the i x and then over here we'll have e to the i n x minus e to the i n x divided by the 2 i so then I'm going to write this over all of n plus and minus and it even includes 0 and I'm going to convince you that this will work let's start with this first constant term that'll be picked up when n is equal to zero if n is equal to zero I'll have e to the zeroth power is a one so I'll simply have c sub zero so c sub zero will equal a sub zero over two then to get the positive values for n what I'm going to do is look up here and note that the positive exponentials happen to be here the first in each case so this first one here will be hitting the a sub n so I have an a sub n over 2 and then over here I will have the b sub n over 2i and if I multiply top and bottom by i I'll get the negative i and the 2 will be hanging around and then for n less than 0 I'll want this second piece and this second piece here notice that we'll have a n over 2 with this piece and then we'll have a b n over 2 i with the negative here and multiplying top and bottom by i we'll get a plus sign so we'll have the same kind of thing happening here except for the plus sign now notice that these here can be expressed in terms of our a's and b's based on our formulas from the previous chapter so that's what we're going to do next we're going to write the c's in terms of 
uh, the A's and the B's, make a connection, so to speak. So we do that. Here's our first one. Our first one says C sub 0 is A unit naught over 2. And I know A naught is equal to this integral from the last chapter. So I simply divide by 2 and I'm finished. For this equation here, for the n greater than 0, here are my equations from the last chapter on how to get a n's and b n's. And applying this rule, this says that we'll have here one half of this one here, and that's the one involving the cosine of nx, minus the i, see the one half is still around here, for this one, so that's why the pi here has the 2 in front from this 2 over here, and you have the minus i, and uh, you have your sign here. So this uh, b here is simply down in here with the pi, and then the 2 from here, the minus i from there, and then the uh, f of x and the sign. So everything's neatly in place, and now we use the Euler formula to replace this combination with e to the minus i n x. A nice formula. When we go to the other case, n less than zero, we have to do the same thing with the plus sign. And when we do that, we'll have a similar result with the plus sign, the only difference being that plus sign, so we'll have e to the plus i n x. And now you can see if this is the case for n positive, to have a minus sign in front, and for n negative to have the plus sign in front, well then I can state that these two apply all the time. In other words, if I use the minus sign with the n, so when n is positive, I have the minus sign as expected. When n is negative, the minus signs will cancel and I'll have the plus result. And also when n is equal to zero, I'll get the A sub 0 over 2 effect over here, the C sub 0, because when you have 0, exponential will be 1, so I'll get this formula, which came you know, from that A naught over 2. So that means this covers everything. That is very, very elegant. And our summary is we have replaced our Fourier series with a series of exponentials because we had cosines and sines. We're replacing cosines and sines with exponentials. And notice the nice summation going from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then the coefficients are given by one simple formula here. You have one coefficient here, one kind of coefficient. So instead of having a naught and then the a n's and the b n's, you have this elegant c n's. Covers everything very, very nice result. We'll build on this result in the next section.